Hi guys, so I thought I would give you a little tour of our lab. If you had been in a face-to-face -face, uh, lab, we would have been in this room in the biology department at UNF. This is the molecular and cellular biology classroom um, for the lab portion. When you enter the room, the first thing to your right is all the safety stuff. So we have our emergency safety kit, the first aid kit, we have the emergency shower controller, as well as the eye wash that's behind this panel. We also have our fire extinguisher. There is the shower. It pours about 30 gallons of water straight onto you um, in case of emergencies. Then we have our glass container where broken glass goes in. And then we have various types of biohazard waste containers. One of them is used specifically for serological pipettes, and we would talk more about that in our very first lab. And the other ones are used for other types of waste that we may have. On each side of our lab, we have sinks. The sinks always contain some betadine surgical scrub to wash your hands with. I usually have a 10% bleach container to decontaminate certain types of glassware once we have ethidium bromide or another uh, such contaminant on them. And we also have some glassware cleaner soap that we can use to wash our glassware. Students are usually required to wash all the glassware that they use and lay, leave them on the drying rack at the end of the day. Then I have a water bath. This is what I use to warm media cells. And then also we use it to incubate our mixtures, you know, uh, things that we need to gently warm at different temperatures and keep at a constant temperature during our experimentation, such as protein or nucleic acids. We have glassware, all type of different glasswares available for the students to use in the cabinets above here. This glassware um, is taken as needed by the students themselves, and then um, we wash it at the end of the day and uh, leave it behind for us, uh, for the next group as you leave the lab. Next, we have some centrifuges. Here is a small one. This takes small tubes, anywhere from 0.6 all the way up to 2 mLs. These centrifuges go up to 14,000 RPM, rotations per minute. Uh, we use this to extract protein, to pellet down cells, to pellet our uh, DNA, all kinds of different things. We also have a small centrifuge right over here that we can also use sometimes as well. Another centrifuge can be found on the other side. So if you look at the lab, uh, the way it is set up, and I'm on the back of it now so you can see it more clearly, you have your chalkboard in the front, when you first enter, you have the emergency supplies and the glassware on the right. But then you also have your benches, right? So each bench is set up for each pair of students to work together and do their work. Um, and there's always going to be a sink on either side so students can wash their glassware, get dispose of their waste appropriately, um, and things like that. So... Going ahead, I will talk about the student bench in a second before let's talk about some other stuff. Here's another sink back here. This one is a shallow sink, so I don't recommend you wash your dishes in here because it tends to splatter a lot. But this, is, this one is important because this has the RO water. So this one is what we use for deionized water anytime we need clean water to use for our experiments. Also, this is where I make all my dilutions of buffers and stuff because that's where I can get that water readily available for me, easy to use. Also over here is a vortex. It's called a maxi mix as well. You can change the speed and when you put your stuff on there, you know, a tube or something, it basically mixes it at a super high speed so that it can make a homogeneous mixture or a suspension. Next, we have over here our fume hood. This is used to take, uh, keep any chemical that can have fumes that can be harmful for us. Anytime we need to work with them, we will work behind this glass in the fume hood. So all those fumes are getting sucked up there and are not getting into us, affecting us um, 
I have some stains in here that we use to stain cells. Anytime uh, we want to stain them to observe them under the microscope in a little bit better manner. I also have a few other solutions that we use for various experimentations as well. When we're using it, we don't want to put our head inside because obviously then you're going to be taking in the fumes. Um, next, I have a huge centrifuge, a larger centrifuge here. This one can be used to not only use the little pipe, you know, tubes like the 2 ml and 1.5 ml, but I also have adapters to use them with 15 ml tubes, 5 ml tubes, and even 500 ml bottles. So we have different adapters for this one to use all kinds of different types of tubes to centrifuge for our centrifuge needs. We have some microscopes. There are three of these inverted microscopes. These are called inverted microscopes because you have the nose piece underneath. And this nose piece underneath allows us to look at cells that are attached to the surface of our vessels. And then there's media on top. The light source in this case is on the top. We use this to look at our cell culture. We have three of these. All of them have this blue cover. So there's one over here. There's another one over there next to the incubators that I'll show you in a second. And there is one on the other side of the lab. This also allows the students to kind of divide up between the different areas and not get one area too filled up. When we are running gel electrophoresis to look at our nucleic acids or proteins, we run them on this back, many times on this back bench area. So we have our weigh, weighing boats and our um, balance to weigh out our different materials, the agarose, for example, or any other powder we need to weigh out to make our gels. We have the buffers that we need to run electrophoresis as well. And then we have a sharps only container to collect any sharps like the pipette tips or the glass, uh, you know, uh, cover slips or anything like that, that we need to go to waste. We always have hand sanitizers all over the place so you can keep yourself aseptic and clean during experimentation instead of having to wash your hands multiple times. Here we have a dry incubator that you can keep at various temperature. Um, we use it sometimes to dry out our DNA pellet and remove excess, uh, excess uh, ethanol in them and sometimes to just incubate our mixtures in there. Next, this one is a rocker or a shaker that we use to mix our stuff, our experiments gently when we need to. It doesn't seem to be switched on. There. So you can see, you can change the speed so that it can do it rock back and forth super fast, or it can do so more gently. And this allows us to incubate our antibodies and our mixtures during experimentation in a way so that it keeps them moving and mixing constantly so that it is a more replicatable process and homogeneous reaction. Here I have a plate reader. This plate reader is used to uh, look at absorbance at various, uh, you know, absorbance that we need, that we may need. It takes 96 well plates. It can also be used to uh, incubate experiments at a particular temperature during, for incubation before the absorbance is read. Um, it reads both UV spectrum as well as normal visible light. So it's a, a great spectrophotometric uh, system. It can take, like I said, 96 samples at a time instead of using one cuvette for each sample separately. Here we have another one of our uh, inverted microscopes and then right next to it I have a normal compound microscopes like the ones that you are probably used to. These microscopes uh, are binoculars. They have a camera attached to it, this one, so that I can also look at the images and show them to you as well as you can look at them yourselves from the computer. Um, and then it has obviously our nose piece that has the various objective lenses. They go from the 4x scanning objective lens to the 10x, uh, you know, 40x, and then finally 100x, which is the oil immersion lens. So we can look at objects all the way up to a 1000x magnification using this particular microscope. Here is our CO2 tank. The CO2 tank is attached to the 
CO2 incubators. These are water jacketed incubators. There are coils of water all along the walls inside the outer and, you know, in between the outer and the inner chambers. Um, inside, you have shelves that we keep our cells in. For example, there is a plate right here um, that is sitting over there. You could grow cells in. We use a water pan in there to maintain humidity as well. These incubators are used to maintain uh, the physiological environment for these cells to grow in. So they'll be kept at 37 degrees Celsius and 5% CO2 uh, to maintain that environment and so the cells can grow healthy. We have multiple ones so that the cells can, um, we, each, each uh, lab has a separate shelf that they use. We have our fridge that takes all our consumables that we need to use, especially for the cell culture. Here is another microscope that is attached with a camera so we can take more pictures. Uh, students can take pictures of their samples. We have racks for students to use. Microscope's uh, supplies that they need uh, to make slides and to put cover slips on them so that they can observe their cells. Um, and then here is another one of the inverted microscopes. We also have uh, ice buckets anytime we need to use ice uh, to incubate our samples in. So let me quickly go through what our stations look like. So the stations in our lab are going to be organized in a particular way. Each section, each pair has a station number associated with them. So we are on station three right now. Um, they will have some lens paper to clean the lenses of the microscope or the slides if they get dirty. They have a conflict bottle, which is basically a vericide, a disinfectant, a deodorizer, and a cleaner that we use to disinfect our surfaces anytime we need we work on them and use them, especially when we are running aseptic technique. We have parafilm that we use to seal our reactions and sometimes also use uh, uh, for other uh, you know, incubations and stuff. Everyone is always given a pen, uh, a marker, and some tape to use as they need. We also have a set of pipettes. The pipettes range from small, which go from 0.5 to 10 microliter, so very small volumes. And then you have ones that go from 5 to 50 microliters. Others that go from 20 to 200 microliters. And finally, we have a hundred to a thousand microliter pipettes. So using these, we can pipette really tiny volumes all the way up to a thousand microliters or one ml. The blue tips go on the blue pipetter or P1000 because that's the maximum it can take. The yellow tips go on P200, the yellow one, and the orange one, the P50. The tips are always discarded in this hard biohazard in for sharps only. We also give uh, Kim wipes and hand sanitizer on each station for uh, your cleaning needs. In addition, many times I provide a cliff note versions of the protocol right here in the lab. However, these are only useful if you've already read through the lab and are familiar with the protocol and cannot be taken just by themselves. It is difficult for students to just look at this by itself and then uh, redo the experiments. Finally, for larger volumes that we need to pipette, we have serological pipette pumps and serological pipettes that they can use. The blue ones go, from, uh, go up to 2 ml. We lift up the volume by going up. We release it by bringing it down. We can also release it by pressing on this button or by in pressing on the top lever. The green ones go up to 10 ml. And for larger than 10 ml, we use these kind of neon pink colored uh, pipette pumps. If we are not using aseptic technique, we use these glass pipettes, glass serological pipettes that come in various sizes. We have them from 1 ml, 2 ml, 5 ml, and 10 ml. For aseptic needs, we have special plastic pipettes that are individually wrapped that we use. We always provide safety glasses in our labs, but they um, are not enough for everyone, so you always want to have your own anyway. It's going to be the best way to use them. 
and we always ask students to bring gloves to use as well. Here are some um, pipettes if you want to see the individually wrapped ones. So we use them once and then we dispose of them. Here is another centrifuge, a couple uh, more of them for people to use on this side of the uh, room and then our, another vortex that they can use as well. At the end of the day, students are required to fill up their pet, pipette tip boxes with provided pipette tips. We autoclave them uh, as needed so that students can have clean pipettes, but they are required to fill the boxes of these pipette tips and to clean up their benches as they leave before uh, at the end of each lab. Well, hope that was a good introduction for the lab for you. Here's the instructor station. This way you can familiarize yourself a little bit with the lab as well um, before you come in. Or in our case, this in the summer semester, it gives you a visual of what it would have looked like in a biology, molecular, cellular biology teaching lab. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.